Hello everyone, this is Hoda Ganji. In this video, I'm going to go over some of the basics of grasshopper in rhinoceros uh, and I'm going to create a pattern such as this one. Uh, so this is a new rhino file. I'm going to go to Tools, Options to check the units. I would prefer to go with meters with absolute tolerance of 0.001. Uh, if you go with millimeters, uh, you can set this to 1, but then when you are working with grasshopper, you need to make sure uh, to assign the values uh, which are appropriate with uh, millimeters. Uh, I would prefer to go with meters actually, go with 0 0.001 here, this seems good, OK. Uh, and I'm working with Rhino 7. In Rhino 6 and 7, grasshopper is embedded, so you can go to grasshopper, just type the command. If you are working with Rhino 5, you can easily install Grasshopper. Uh, so if I want to have something like this, first I want to create a grid and then I'm going to create a point, consider it as an attractor point and uh, work with the relationship between the distance of the grid and the point uh, with the radius of the circles. So I'm going to create a grid. The easiest way to set up a grid is actually using points and a sequence. So first I'm going to go with a point. Uh, so I have seen Grasshopper, basically all your options are here. If I go to Vector and if I click on Point, Construct Point, and I put it here, it's going to create a point for me. Okay, so as soon as you do that, it's going to show a little cross with a red color. If you click on that, that's going to become green. That's how you know it's selected. Uh, or you can do this. You can create a kind of a point over there. Uh, bring this node, which says point. You can right click here. You can go with set one point. Click on the point. And that point is now... Uh, part of your information in the grasshopper file. Both methods to create a point work very well. However, uh, if you work with this one, uh, which is reading the information from Rhino, if you open it in a different Rhino file, which does not have that point, it's going to show you an error. So for now, I'm going to uh, also create the point in Rhino itself, so it can work on any Rhino file. Uh, I'm going to delete this and I can get rid of that point. Uh, and now I want to bring a series, which is another node. I want to double click and bring series. And if you want to have a set of numbers, the easiest way uh, to create them is series, which is part of the list icons. So uh, let's say if I want the points to be one meter away from each other, uh, I can assign one to the step size. So you can double click here, type 1, enter, and automatically it's going to create one number slider that goes to my number. And for the number, it sets uh, to 10 automatically. I'll go with 10. And if I bring a panel to see what's going on here, uh, you can either bring a panel from here, or you can double click and say panel. It's the easiest way to understand what's going on inside a node. So you see that we have 10 values going from 0 to 9. Uh, if I assign this to my x, see what happened here. If I want to see inside this node, I can connect it to the panel. And you see that the y and the z are set to 0, but this time the x has the values inside that series, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Right. Let's say if I want to have a grid which is 10 by 10, uh, I can assign the same value to y or I can use a different series if I don't want to have the same values. Uh, so I can copy and paste this here maybe. And uh, let's say I want to assign this to here. But maybe instead of 10 values on the y side, I want to have like 15 items. Uh, see what happens when I assign 15. If I assign that to 15 and then assign this to here, uh, basically you see that uh, it goes from 0 to 14, so that means we have 15 points, right? For the first 
uh, 10 points, uh, we also have some values for the x, but that is, as it goes higher, uh, the values for the x stays the same because we have only 10 values by default on the x direction. Now, if I want to have a set of grids, I need uh, actually more uh, numbers of points here, so I need a different uh, alternative. Uh, and if I change this to graft, it's going to actually give me that different alternative. So when you go with graft, it, it means uh, that you are telling Grasshopper to go with as many solutions as possible. Right. So now it's going from 0 to 14, and then it's going uh, 10 times by 0 to 14. The reason you see that we have a dashed line here, it means that it has some information which is in the format of a list within a list. Right. So if you want all of them to be in one list, you can flatten the output. So now we have only one list. Uh, the reason you see 150 elements are here is that the number comes from 10 uh, multiplied by 15, which is 150, going from element number 0 to element number 149, we have 150 points here. Uh, so if I want to create something like this, I need to create circles. So I want to type circle. Uh, maybe I can go with this one, circle with the center, normal, and radius. So uh, if the center of the circle is the same as the points that we have, this should be assigned to the circle, right? If I connect this to this, now you see that we have 150 circles. All of them have a radius of 1. Uh, of course, to the radius, I can assign different values here, like 0.5. Right. But what I'm interested to do here is that I want to relate that radius to the location of uh, an attractor point. So uh, I want to have a different point, which is going to be my attractor. So far, if I want to uh, clean here a little bit, if I want to keep organized, I can group these items. I can go with a group. If you want to add a note on the canvas, you can double click here, go with Scribble, uh, and this is going to allow you to write something directly on the canvas. I'm going to say this is my grid, maybe. So this is what um, this group is about. Then I'm going to need an attractor point. I can double click here, type uh, Scribble. And I want to go with attractor point. Okay. And uh, this time you can again bring a point from here and select it in Grasshopper or directly uh, draw a point in Grasshopper. So I want to go to Vector, construct a point, click here. Let's say maybe this is in seven and a half, seven and a half, and zero. Right, so I can assign this to like my X and or Y. So the point is over there. That green one is my attractor point. I want to get the distance between this point and the grid that we have, right? So I can type distance. Uh, this item is going to give me the distance between two points. So uh, the grid goes to one of them, the point goes to the other one. If I connect this to a panel, uh, you see that these are the values, uh, which is the distance of each of the grid points to the attractor, right? So see what happens if I uh, assign this value to my radius instead of a single number, right? I'm going to assign this value to the radius. Now you see uh, the radius of the circles is related to that distance, but those values are too big. Uh, so I want to divide these distances by some value larger than 1, let's say maybe 20 or 50, that goes to my B. If I assign this to the panel, now you see the numbers are much smaller now. I can assign this to the radius, uh, maybe they are now too small actually. Uh, I can reduce this to like 20. 
Okay, so now you see that uh, the size of the circle is related to uh, the distance uh, between the center of the circle and the attractor point, right? I can move this and you can see that the pattern is being updated, right? So this seems like good enough. Uh, how about I kind of move this over here? So these two items here, I want to right click on the canvas and create a group. This is my attractor point. These elements here are responsible to make my circles. I want to select four of them and I want to right click, go with a group, type scribble. And I want to mention these are my circles. Uh, now, if we want to get close to this, we need to also like extrude the circles uh, and maybe you don't want to see uh, those dots anymore, the points anymore, so we can hide, you can turn the preview off, we can also turn the preview off the attractor point and I want to actually extrude the circles, I want to type extrude. Uh, I want to select this, uh, it says profile curve or surface, so the circle is a curve, I can connect this to that, and then we need to assign some values to the direction, uh, I can just type maybe Z, unit Z, and if I assign this to this, it's going to kind of uh, extrude this as solids by one meter. Right. If you don't want it to go up as high as 1 meter, you can assign a single value here, let's say 0.1, which is going to be 10 centimeters. That can go to my uh, factor and that can go there. Right. Uh, you can also relate the amount of extrusion to what we have over there. So if I assign uh, that distance to my F, you see now the uh, kind of the further the circles are from the attractor point, they're also higher because the extrusion is also related to the distance. Okay, uh, the thing here is that uh, the extrusion did not cap the cylinders, so I want to type cap. Uh, I want to type cap, cap holes, assign this to this, and now you see that these are actual cylinders, right? So, uh, how about I make a group out of these items and I want to double click, go with the scribble, this is my cylinders. Uh, so you see that we have 150 objects here. Anything that I change here is going to affect the whole pattern. Let's say if I want to change this to uh, 6.5 it's going to automatically update the pattern. Let's say you want to go with maybe 14 items on this side. It's going to get rid of the last row. Uh, let's say for this icon over here, you also want to have 14 elements, so you can assign 14 to the number, so now it's more like a square shaped thing, right? Uh, now the last step here, I can get rid of this panel. Uh, if you want these objects to also be available in your rhinoceros, you see we cannot select them right now. We have to actually bake them. That's the term in Rhino. So we can select the last icon, right click, and we're going to go with bake. Uh, it's going to be on the default layer. That's good. If you have created more layers, you can change it. I'm going to say OK. And now I can save this grasshopper file and I can uh, close it. And you see that although Grasshopper is not open anymore, but uh, we actually see the objects here because they are actually uh, real objects in Rhino as well, right? Uh, now you can assign some materials to your default layer. It's going to be affected here. You can go to Rendered. Uh, let's say if you want to have some kind of a solid fill for the ground. So I want to go to File Properties, under Render, Ground Plane, Ground Plane Settings, 
and I want to use a new material that can be like a paint or something I want to create a new paint maybe dark red uh, okay here okay over there and okay around here 